Salam Tana, Tainayistavim. Greetings, brothers and sisters. And once again, this is a one twentieth. We've reached the one twentieth um, memory, memorial, and celebration for Lynch Tesari, for His Imperial Majesty Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie first. And once again, I say Hallelujah. And may the Rastafari faithful say, Amen and Amen. Oh. Brothers and sisters, this is still a sabbatical week. We are still in we are still in the Shabbat. And may we stay in the Shabbat mindset. The the Sabbath mindset is very, very important for I and I. And there's you know, there's there's a lot of um <clears throat> as they say, moving pieces. There's, there's a lot of movement, and really the challenge for us right now is is coordinating all of this movement and the movement in order and keeping good order. Um, as you know, I and I have been on the study and in this uh, ministry, which is a service, our Gelgelot is a service, you understand, and it's for all of us to to be born again, to, to come to that repentance of mind, you know, so we can truly become sons and daughters, and being born again and to also grow up. It's important for us to grow up. That means to gain the, the knowledge, you know, the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim. And, and that's, that's, that's a crucial matter for I and I. So this once again the one twentieth of his imperial majesty is very significant. This hundred and twentieth is, is very important and we, we've been um going over the, the scriptural um the scriptures and the scriptural evidence, namely Genesis six and three, and then connecting that both in the beginning of the book as well as in the prophetic fulfillment in the book of Revelation or Ye Johannes Rai. And Rai, as we have been going over, is the vision, right? It says in the scripture that a, a, a people without vision perish. So we should not, and we cannot, and we must not be a people that lack the vision. And it's not our own vision or our own dreams or our own ideas or fantasies, but it is the vision of God in Christ. Now, for many of us, what has been laid on I and I hearts and in I and I consciences. That wisdom, you know, saying that, that that wisdom, as Dawit King David says, um, that, that that wisdom is is hidden. That word is hidden in I and I. So we have to discover or uncover that through the diligent study of the word and the application to our life of the the principles of, 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 of the way, in other words, the application of what we are, we are learning and what we are becoming um, persuaded of, convinced of, you understand, know is the truth. And it's the Holy Spirit, you see what I'm saying, it's the Holy Spirit of God in Christ, of God in Christ. And if we are in Christ and Christ's word is within us, then it's his Holy Spirit that guides us, that gives us the, the, the strength. As it says in um, Ephesians, in, in the book of Ephesians, it says, be strong, be strong. And that used to be, and it should become once again a motto for I and I, to be strong. But what's the context? To be strong in the Lord, in Adonai. In Ekiziyavihir, in the sustain, in he who is or he who be, who he be. And it says the power, the power of his might. Why? Because we're in those days. Let's just go through this and um, we're going to get into uh, 40, the 41st Phineas and touch on some key elements of um, the Rastafari sabbatical study of the RSS. So as you might know or have um, been picking up, we might use different um, uh, names for the different types of studies or publications 
that we are that we are ministering and that we are dealing with. So this is this is uh what we what we're doing right here is catching up in a sense. We took a day or so um as a as a Sabbath or a Shabbat, a, a holy Sabbath of prayer and, and meditation and um where possible fellowship for the King of Kings hundred and twentieth. And now that has been fulfilled and many of our other brothers and sisters like Lajikab and, and the brothers and sisters in the California um kibbutz as we call it or the, the farming community and there's other brothers and sisters on the Facebook. And we want to hail the eye them up on the Facebook. All the brothers and sisters who have been fellowshipping with I and I, um uh tweeting, um uh, putting various uh vids and and clips and information and, and words of encouragement, whether Jew, whether black Hebrew, or whether Gentile, whether righteous Gentile. And this question about the Hebrews, in other words, the Jews or the blacks and the whites, or about the Jews and the Gentiles, Brothers and sisters, I know I've been saying, yes, we're going to get into more of it. I've been touching on it as we've been teaching on various areas of the scriptures and various areas of the prophetic revelation. And um, I and I will, by his will, get into that because I think it's very important for us to know, well, first of all, what is our identity? We must have our identity clear and our identity was know who we are in Yeshua. And we must know who we are in spirit and in truth. This is very, very important. But let's get into this word right here on Ephesians for a moment. All right, Ephesians. Mm-hmm. That's an op. The word that a manifest is produced. Hadu Amlak. And Ephesians... What we're going to do is go from, we're in chapter 6, and we're going to touch on, um, uh, beginning with verse 10, chapter 6, verse 10, all right? Chapter 6, uh, verse 10 of the book of Ephesians, of the epistle to those in Ephesus. Ephesus was a place, as we are in various places in the diaspora. And I and I is praying for the I them and also working with many who are stepping forward and saying in whatever area they are in, they would like to start a gathering. Whether it's a a church or a churchical gathering, but beginning off with a Bible study. Or perhaps with certain other ministry. Ministry means a service, some service for those who are born again who are in that rebirth of the King of Kings and his Christ, and those who are growing up, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what your call is. As it says that the, the gifts and the calling of God, of a Gizyadah here, of Hashem, are without repentance. This means that many of us already have gifts and callings, even if we have not um, consciously um, repented, if we have not, you know, really um, been born again in the conscious way. I mean, the conscious way. We might feel that something is different, something is changing. We're growing in, in, in knowledge, and, and we begin to see the truth. And, and, and the truth is, is manifesting itself ever increasingly day by day. But we have to recognize that the initiation is the rebirth. You understand that we must do this in a conscious, a purposeful way. You understand, but it's not for I or any of I and I to force any of anyone else. You understand to do this, and this is very important that we understand because sometimes we get zealous. You know, we get caught up in a zeal. But the scriptures point to something about zeal, and this is from the book of Romans or the Epistle to the Romans, um, chapter ten, and it speaks about the apparent failure, the failure of our ancestors and, and the failure of the previous generation 
but this is a warning to us in this present time, those of us who are of age presently, as we see many of I and I elders and many of the elders in the movement and Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew and the African, the black people movement, Afrocentric as well, the Pan-African movement are passing on, have passed on, have passed away have died, if you please, or for us as the righteous have gone to sleep or gone to their rest. So the uh, baton, in a sense, is, and, or the scepter in that way, is being passed to us of this generation. So how do we learn from the mistakes from the past, but also consolidate that which has been gained, you know, and that which has been um, passed on to us? But we have to recognize, first of all, who we are, where we have come from, what this movement is about. So the, the knowledge, the information is very, very important. It's, it's very important for us to, to, um, to learn, not just to hear things, but to find the time, you understand, to, to, to study, find the time to um, fellowship with others, find the time to ground ourselves. Because if we don't have groundation, it's like a circuit system, a sound system. If it's not grounded, it, it can short out. You understand the sound. You understand would not be, be crisp. The sound would not be clear. The sound would not be resonant. So that's very important for us, like to say, sound check, sound check. And keep that word sound check or sound in mind. And for those who, who know how to study this word, with all the resources that are available both through the Society of His Majesty at our website on the study page, as well as other resources that are out there that help to aid us and assist us, you understand, in making a short work. You understand, so this is Rastafari at work. This is, we can say, the theocracy, the, the monarchy, and, and the restoration of the monarchy is another point that I and I is, is, is eager to, um, to begin to reason with and to build with others who are, who are conscious and active in that particular way for the restoration of the imperial Ethiopian monarchy. But the first thing for, what, what is first? First is for us to get that spiritual, that, that covenant groundation. You know, first is for us individually, you understand, to, to, to get our house in order, our heads and our heart in order, to initiate by um, being born again, by repenting, have a change of mind. Even the repentance teaching, and a particular sister um, uh, had commented on the Facebook, I think uh, was looking for some of the vids on, um, on, on baptism, some of the vids that we had been on baptism and certain topical themes or subject matters that we had spoken on because it's necessary sometimes to speak on certain particular subject matters so we can get clearer on what is the instructions for us. So once we get the instructions, the groundation, then we can look in this present time, see where we're at, knowing who we are and what we need to do you know, individually and collectively and corporately working together, you understand, for the fulfillment of the word of God in Christ, of the establishment. You see, we're about establishing the kingdom of the king of kings in real time on the earth. So patience is very important too. Patience is a key. You understand, patience, his majesty even shows us, Kadamawi Haile Shalasi, Haile Shalasi the first even shows us that, that, um, that, that, that discipline, when he speaks about gradually, this doesn't mean we go very slow, but this definitely means that we do not go faster or we rush things. You know what I'm saying? It means that we be still and know Jah within the innermost of the inner man and know him not by just what we feel or think, but to confirm what we feel and what we think by his word. And then to confirm what we feel and think by his word in fellowship, in um, cooperation, you understand, in fellowship with our other brothers and sisters. 
I think it's very important for us to peer up in the studies. You understand the Havrata, or the Havruta, as it's called in the Hebrew, to peer up. You understand, the so-called, they call it in the world, the buddy system. You understand, we call it the brethren, or the brethren system, or the sistren system. It's very, very important. You understand, that really um, helps to, at the rightful pace, um, accelerate our growth. When we have our, our brothers and sisters who we do study with, and it does not have to be um, always face-to-face. -face. It can be through even the various medium that we have. Once we know the truth, you know, once we know how to try the spirits to see what spirit is of God, of Jah or not, firstly in ourselves. You know, it's easy for us to check other people and say, oh, is this one? But we first have to make sure that we are clear. You know what I'm saying? Are we clear? Are we fully clear? You know, we study and show thyself approved to God as a workman or workwoman that need not be ashamed. So that means if we um, do not study to show ourselves approved, if we have maybe, like say, half cock, or we have a little bit of knowledge, a lot of zeal, you know what I'm saying? Then somewhere along the line, we are going to be reprove, we're going to be shamed, you understand? And if we want to avoid that, as we should, we must study and show I and I self-approved. So let's get to the scripture right here. Um, Romans chapter 10. It speaks about the apparent failure of the promises to Israel. And we are Israel, the true beta Israel, once lost but now found black sheep of the family. Now, this does not disclude the Gentiles, the European or the white or the, the, the foreign Rasta or Rastafari. You understand? And this question has been coming up among both the so-called Gentile Rastafari or the righteous among the Gentiles who hail Rastafari, who have joined themselves to Ketamawi Haile Shalasi, to he who be who he be, to the king of kings, as well as among I and I. You understand? The ethnic people or the people of the seed. This question has been coming up because as we know there's a whole thing about um, can a white uh, like can, can a white man or a white woman or can a white boy be Rastafari and if so how you know how do we qualify it? You understand by our own um, um, opinion, you understand by what has happened you know in 400 plus years of, of, of white supremacy because see there's a lot of there's a lot of, um, not baggage, you know what I'm saying, but there's a lot that we have to um, get the sound check, sound check. That word sound is very important. When it says sound doctrine, you know what I'm saying, and to be sound, you know what I'm saying, in the scriptures that word sound means to be healthy. Now, Rastafari is about health, as we know, but whether it's the holistic or the Aital food, whether it's the liberty, there's a very strong... Um, focus on health, you know, on healthiness, on, on healthy living, whether we call it ital, you understand, or holistic, or, or isla, in that sense, to say, it is holy. But who sets the standard for holy? It must be Jah and Jah's word. And this is what makes it simple. This is what makes it easier. This is what makes it straightforward. You understand? This is what gives us that standard. This is what establishes the basic um, threshold of order. You understand? Of order. In other words, like order in the court. Order in the court of His Majesty. Order in the house of Rastafari. Order in the Beta Rastafari. So, here in the scriptures, it's speaking about there was apparent failure of the promises. The promises is that which we are still looking forward to. You understand? It's basically the hope of Rastafari. All who are Rastafari, there's a certain hope, and that is good over evil. That is the establishment of the kingdom of the Lord. You understand? The kingdom of Adonai, the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ, the establishment of the millennia and the millennial kingdom. Because Jah wants I and I to reign, but we must first of all know how to reign. We must know who we are. You understand? Know we must know of what are the resources that we have to overcome, to accomplish I and I mission, to accomplish I and I ministry. You understand? Know to fulfill the word of His Majesty, and this is why the B I B L E, the Bible, is so important. 
but we know that we have received the Bible um, from Caliphate Christianity or through, you know, in other words, where's a mixed fruit? You know, what we have received in the Bible is, is, is a very, very mixed fruit. And there's a lot of confusion. A lot of, a lot of us have testimonies about, you know, um, now that we are beginning to know the truth and, and learning the truth, you understand, through this ministry, through, through these teachings, we begin to compare it with what we heard before. And we, see, we begin to see the differences. But it's very important for us to put in the trash the garbage. You know what I'm saying? Once we recognize, oh, wow, that was a lie that we was taught. That was false. This is the truth. Not to, not, not to remain um, um, double-minded, not to be double-minded, but to affirm the truth, you know what I'm saying, and to move in it. But to remember we have the resources. It's not just a fleshy movement. This is the iritical. It's a spiritual movement. So we have to be able to tap in to his spirit. We have to be able to magnetize the spirit of the King of Kings, the spirit of God, that same spirit that we see manifested in and through the visitation of Kedamawi, Haila, Shalasi. That same spirit is available to I and I, Yovasan, in Yeshua's name, in Yeshua's name. And the scriptures fulfills fulfills that for us. It fulfills that word. You know so there were promises to Israel that seem to have failed. As we looked even among Rastafari, we can say, wow, we were given Shashimani. Wow. Um, the prophecy says, well, the King of Kings will manifest. Well, well how come we are not living in that um, fulfillment of the manifestation? You know, and some um, who blame Haile Selassie the first, like some of the careless Ethiopians at home and abroad, well, they blame his majesty for it. You understand? But really, if we are wise to salvation, we recognize that it's our ancestors, it's many of our mothers and fathers, you understand, in that previous generation, you understand, for whatever reason, you understand, for whatever reason, we can't get too caught up, even though we recognize how come they did not get it, you understand, but here's the point, we get it, so we learn now why they did not get this. You understand? And also we learn the way not to get it as well as the way to get it. We, we learn from the apparent failures of the previous generation. And at the 120th, you understand, of Lij Tafari, the Malkam Ledeta Lij Tafari, Kermawi Haile Shlase, is very important. This is very important for I and I. So it, it explains that the reason for all of this was because of According to the Schofield, says unbelief. Well, we understand unbelief, don't we? We should understand what this unbelief is, right? That we, we know that the word be naive and the word sound and power about that on the basic level, the kindergarten level of Rastafari. But now as we go to, to higher school, a higher sense of learning, as we get into the language, our pure language, the Metzahaf Kedus, we recognize that unbelief is a lack of amen, a lack of amen. Revelation 3 and 14, Yeshua reveals, the incarnate Yeshua reveals, the ascendant Yeshua, you understand, the resurrected Yeshua, Jesus, Christos, he reveals that he is the Amen. So it's, it's a beautiful meditation when we think about it, the Amen meditation, because for some it's like, oh, that sounds like ancient Egypt. Well, the ancient Egyptians knew this truth. But it's the priesthood, you understand, it's through the priesthood that much of this truth was um, um, mis, you know, misinformed, you understand, in a degenerate way. The, the teaching degenerate. It's like we look right now. The Bible is true, you understand, the, the essence through the Spirit, God, being guided by Jah's Spirit, is true. But we see a lot of different type of denominations, a lot of different type of schisms, a lot of different types of um, aversions of so-called Christianity. We, we overstand the whole connection with, with the papacy, which is similar to what happened. See, see the, our, our, not our, but the papacy today, you understand? If we overstand what the papacy means fully in spirit and in truth, it's similar to what happened with the ancient Egyptian priesthood. You understand? And that's also a very important subject matter. To, to touch on. So some of these things that I'm just touching on briefly or, or mentioning 
are areas that it's a, it'll be important for us um, in our independent studies as well as more collectively to, to get clear on. You'll tend to get a clearer idea. That means we're going to have to do the research. You understand? And many of y'all will must, must become involved with this. You understand? As, as, as you freely choose. You know, saying according to your free will, as you freely choose. So we need more reporters, line of Judah reporters, ones that that will file special reports or, or regular reports. You know, saying see our testimony, testifying to what Jah has done for I and I, to testify. You know, saying to what we're able to witness and manifest in the revelations that are given to us to to communicate. You know, saying as it says to um. We should ne not neglect the communication, not neglect the fellowship. You know what I'm saying? It's not just fellowship just in body, you know what I'm saying? But it's fellowship in spirit. It's fellowship in soul. You know what I'm saying? It's, and it's fellowship in truth. So the triune must be always affirmed because that is, that is the root. That's when you have the overstanding. That's when it's holistic. That's when it's fulfilled in spirit, in soul, and in body. But now, on the spiritual level, it's the word, you understand, that, that attracts to us the Holy Spirit. You understand, and it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to understand this holy word. Many of these priests and, and, and denominations, you understand, do not really have the, the spirit of truth. Because if they had the spirit of truth, that whole racist part, the racial Part, the, the denying of the flesh of Christ, the humanity, his, 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 his ethnic blackness. You see, it's not just about the blackness, like some of our um, brothers and sisters, um, and many of us included, you know, I and I included, had once thought that, okay, it's, once we recognize the blackness, because we can see the evidence for it, that's just the first step. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's just the first step. But many have, have stopped there. And it's similar when we look at the apparent failure of the promises, the hopes, the expectation to our ancestors are explained by their unbelief, by their lack of admittance, their lack of ability to accept, accept Jah word and Jah way as truth. You understand? And, and, and it says right here, it says, brethren, Brethren, Hawari Paolo says, Brethren, my heart's desire, I and I heart's desire and prayer, and prayer to God, and prayer to Jah, and prayer to the Father, prayer to Abba, Ha Elohim, the Hashem, Kedamawi, Haila Shalasi, Haila Shalasi the first, in the name of Christos, Jesus, the resurrected Yeshua, for Israel. For I and I as Israel, the once lost but now found, and many of those of I and I people who are still lost, you understand? Our prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. This point about salvation is something that I know that many of us as Rastafari, we, we have it um, embedded in a sense. We have it um, in that inner sense, you understand? But we have not fully recognized its importance both in our personal lives as well as in our corporate lives. So we say, well, what's wrong with the movement? They say that the whole or the entirety is only as good as its corresponding elements or, or, or parts. You understand? So if Majesty says that if the mason is, is, is able and his, and his materials are good, you understand? If a mason of a builder is able and he has good materials, then, and then a sure and a solid foundation can be, can be laid, you understand? And, and a firm structure, you understand, can be built on that. I, so I think about that, I said, that's true. But suppose the mason is able, but his his materials are not good. You know what I'm Suppose a mason is able, a builder is able, but, but he doesn't have all, he has some but not all of the materials he needs. Or he has, he has a lot of materials, but only some of it is really good, but a lot of it is not. Then, then the Holy Spirit said, that's exactly, you know what I'm saying, why what happened in 
1974-75, the creeping coup against his imperial majesty, the great transgression against the king of kings, the so-called Ethiopian revolution. That's one reason why that occurred. You see, because the mason, the builder, his majesty, our godfather and king of kings, he was able, he is able, he will be able, you understand? Yet, it, it is the, the, the materials, you understand, those of us who are in the matter universe, you understand, we're in the phi cycle. Yes, I and I is spiritual, you understand, but we are spiritual beings, so-called having a human or a physical world, a material world experience. But see, it's that material world. It's the materialism. It's all the isms and schisms and everything else. And, 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 a, and a, a lack of faith. You see, it's a lack of faith. You know what I'm saying? It's a lack of faith. We think that it's the enemies. We think it's the Gentiles. We think it maybe it's the European or the secret societies or the other conspirators. No. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. It, it's not them, you know what I'm saying? But it's us. You know what I'm saying? If our, if we possess, if we have a lack of faith, or we do not have full faith, you know what I'm saying? Then the Mason, the Builder, you know what I'm saying? Yeshua, His Majesty, God the Father, the Triune God, He is able. You know what I'm saying? If we don't recognize those resources that we already have, especially in the new birth, you know what I'm saying? In, in that rebirth, when we are truly born again according to his way, not according to our way, not according to um, even the Bingi way or the Bobo way or the 12 tribes way. And I'm not saying that in these different mansions of Rastafari, they are not ones who recognize the same truth and have been building on that foundation the same truth. But we have to know the truth for I and I self. He says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You understand? Know Whom the Son, the welder, Yeshua has freed, is free indeed. So it should not um, surprise us that His Imperial Majesty, you understand, know has witnessed and given such a clear witness to Geta Chin Jesus Christos, both in word and in deed and in manifestation. Now, do we have faith in that? Do we, have we learned of that? Do we accept that? Do we accept His Majesty's teaching? And it's not just through a church, say, okay, I'm a member of the Orthodox Church. That is good. You understand? Know if, if one is. But it's more important. You understand? Know What's more important is the Word of Jah. You understand? Know is the Word of God. Is the pure teaching, you understand, know of His Imperial Majesty. Because we know that there has been an apostasy. There's been a falling away. So if you're not able... You understand, or if you're unable to um, try every spirit, you understand, or discern, you understand, according to his word, not according to your feelings, not according to what, what, what other people say, but if you don't know the truth for yourself, then that says that at this time, your lack of knowledge, your, your ignorance, you understand, or your lack of admittance in what you already know, because many of us already know some of these, we already know these things. You know what I'm saying? But we've been wrestling with it. You understand? So we think, um, well, maybe it's the world that's stopping it, or maybe it's the, the Babylonians, or, or, or even to a point, maybe somehow Jah is being unjust, because I know this truth. I'm, I'm a good person. I'm basically such and such. Don't delude yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Um, but try yourselves. But test yourselves. You know what I'm saying? As it says, ye who think you stand, Check yourselves. Make sure you, you truly stand. Are you okay? You standing? Or are you standing on His Majesty's square? You understand? Know because He is able. You understand? Know he is able, and He's looking. You understand? Know throughout the earth, He is looking to and fro for those who will be faithful. He wants to transfer even the wealth. You understand? Know of the wicked. You understand? Know into the hands of His children. But he is still looking for his children in spirit and in truth. So it should be each of our personal endeavor to be those children. Not because we say, yes, Jah is my father. Yes, I'm a son of God. I'm a, I'm a daughter of God. But to know, you know what I'm saying? Once we know this and to have firmness of faith, 
you know what I'm saying, to be strong, you know what I'm saying, in his faith. Notice how Yeshua, Jesus, often said to his disciples, and sometimes I think of us and even the previous generation of Rastafari, similar to those disciples. Do you remember the disciples, you know what I'm saying, the 12 or 11, but we have to look at all 12, you know what I'm saying, of the disciples. You know what I'm saying? And different, different ones of them remind I and I of I and I selves. You know what I'm saying? In fact, each one of the 12 disciples, you know what I'm saying? If we were study, if we were study um, metaphysically, we can learn things about ourselves. And we can also overcome certain things that we've been seeking and desiring to overcome in I and I selves. Because those disciples were like the corporate Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? Like the corporate man. You understand? Know, the relationship of the twelve disciples is like the twelve tribes. You understand? Know, with Moses and with with Jah and the twelve disciples. You understand? Know, in that same relationship with the Jesus Christos and I and I. You understand? Know, I and I even today. You understand? Know, as the Beta Israel. So we see that the disciples after the 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 death or the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And we've seen that same cycle within His Imperial Majesty. You understand that crucifixion, where He was crucified, you understand, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a modern revelation way, but according to the same principles, you understand, and even principalities, that Christ was the Christ the Son, you understand? Christ the Son was crucified. Christ the Son, who is Lord of Lords, you understand, was crucified. And God the Father, the King of Kings, bearing witness, you understand, in spirit and in truth, you understand, for us, in this time also was crucified on this particular world stage. And then we see the Rastafari. We see Bob Marley even recording the song that Jalith, Yahai, Yahai. That Jah lives, O oh, children, yeah. But many of the Rastafari at that time, um, some, we can say, fell away. You understand? Some fell away. We had those like Bob and, and others who, in, in that darkest so called day and hour, you understand, after the revolution, after all the false media, the lies, against the King of Kings, still maintain the firmness. You know what I'm saying? Still sought to make maintain that firmness. But when we study um, the Son and the testimony of the Son, and then we study the Father, when we study the Lord of Lords, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, and then we study the King of Kings and His Christ, the Holy Spirit will witness to us that it's one and the same in spirit and in truth. You understand? But then that gives us a key. That gives us a key because then we see, well, who are we in that picture? You understand? As we look at the, 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 first, um, the first century Christians, you understand? Are like those first century, or those, those first century Rastafari from 1930 coming on forward. Now, who are we in that dispensation? And what can we learn from their particular examples? Salvation is important. You know what I'm saying? For I bear them record that they have a zeal. Nobody can deny that I and I and I and I Rastafari people do not have a zeal. Zeal, that means, you know, like uh, have, have, have a strong passion, a very passionate, you understand, um, and earnest. You know what about Ja Rastafari, Haida Salasiya. You know what I'm saying? We have that strong, you know what I'm saying? That, that strong zeal, that strong passion, that strong emotion, right? And Paul says, I bear them record. He bears record. You, you know, there was no criticism, and there's no criticism about the zeal that even black people in general, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in general, should I say, have for um, God in their various religious denominations. And we, as that particular people, Rastafari, the, the ethnic, you understand, Hebrews, the black Hebrews, you understand, the Ethiopian Hebrews. It's also clear that particular zeal that even we have. But, and there's, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a but there, not a big but, you understand, not a small one, but it is still a but. 
However, on the other hand, if you please, to say, not according to knowledge. Wow. That they have the zeal. So we have to check ourselves. Do we have the zeal? Are we zealous in the way that we individually walk and talk and carry on ourselves? Are we zealous for Rastafari? Rastafari. Even the way we, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we're very zealous. But is it according to ilk? Is it according to the da'at? You understand? Is it according to knowledge? Is it according, or is it according to what we feel? You understand? Or what we sense, or what we perceive. You understand? But if it's not according to knowledge, and a, a deception can come in. You understand? Not because we, we willingly want to be deceived, but we don't have the knowledge. You see, knowledge is very important. You understand? Knowledge is very important. You know, we say Jah love, we need Jah knowledge. But knowledge itself, by itself, without the love of Jah, puffs up. Knowledge is puffed up. You know what I'm saying? But it's charity, or it is love, the love of Jah. So we've got to put that in context. Like we say, it's all about love. Love will solve all of this. Love. And I've had to remind one, it's not just love. No, it's not just love. We've got, we got to qualify the love. What does that mean? That's the quality. Who, whose love is it? Well, people say, if we just have love, then everything will come together. And you, you hear a lot of our Rastafari people sincerely say that. And they're very zealous for that, that all we need is, is love. So ones think, well, yes, I, I and I love, love I, love I. You know, and we'll say love a lot. You know, we think by the multitude of our saying love, 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 you understand, that will, and we'll be very zealous about it, you know. However, what, what do we lack? We lack knowledge. You understand? We lack um, gnosis. We lack ilket. We lack um, da'at. You understand? We lack the knowledge. And this reminds me of when we say Rastafari. You understand? Many are beginning to learn and study and know the truth for themselves that um, many have said Rastafari or Rastafari means head creator. Right? Means head creator. You know? And for, for some years now, we have been trying to just remind the Rastafari by the gifts and the calling that we have been called in to serve. You know, saying to serve in the house of Rastafari, in the family of His Majesty, in the family of God in Christ. That that is only half correct. That's only that's a, that's a half truth. And even if you're stepping on that half truth, the most you can step is halfway. So even if you're not intending to half step, you still are half stepping because you only have half of the knowledge. You understand? Oh, what you know is only half true, only half correct. I mean, this is what I want you, each of you to think about. You understand? Don't point at the next brother or sister. No, just think about this in yourself for a moment. I mean, how serious this is. But because we have brought that word to some who are not maybe ready or, or able to receive it, you know, there's that backlash, you know, who, who you think you are. You understand? You're not Jamaican or, or, or your locks are not long or, or, or this or that. You, you, always, you know, boy, I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? You know, because Bob Marley say Rastafari and, and different ones say Rastafari, head creator. You understand? Okay. But you remember what the elders used to teach and sing about? Natty Dread, learn Amarik, learn the Amarik. You understand? Natty Dread. We have to learn that Amaric, and there's a prophetic scripture, uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, that both mention that he will turn to us a what pure language that we all may call upon the name of he who be who he be, yeah, upon the name of the king of kings, the revelation of the Lord. You understand? In this time and dispensation, call upon the name Kedamawi Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase first. You understand? To serve him. You understand? To what? To serve him with one consent. With one consent. That's our unity. There is our identity. And it's not just, just, just learning, just Amharic, but it's, it's learning Amharic. 
and learning our pure language, the King of Kings language. You understand? In in context, in the context of his word and his way. So as we learn of him, as we strengthen ourselves in this faith, this is why much of the work that we're seeking to um, to to publish and to minister often connect certain key Amharic words or go over scripture. Like there's some scripture that we know well, maybe from the English, and now we can go and study that in the Amharic. You understand? So when we see that word right there, you understand? That right there shows us how to overcome this seeming disunity, to overcome this, this inertia, this inertia that we're in in the movement. Or the movement is not moving the way the movement should move. But that's not for us to point the fingers at anybody else first before we check ourselves. You understand? Before we check I and I selves. You understand? So, with that being said, it says that. They had a zeal of God. They had a zeal of Jah, and, and then they had a zeal in that sense for Jah, but not according to knowledge. So we've had half that knowledge. Rastafari head, Ras is correct. Tafari or Teferi means one who is to be reverence, one who is to be, in that sense, respected or feared. That's, and, and, and there's a very important key. You understand? There's a key in that. You remember when Yeshua says, Fear not him who can um, kill the body, kill the flesh. You know, we're saying like these killers and murderers. Don't fear them. Don't fear them. Let thy heart not be, you know, let thy heart not be, be troubled. You know what I'm saying? Don't fear them. You know what I'm saying? But it says, Fear he who can destroy the body. You understand? And the soul, you understand? In the fire, the Gehenna. You understand? In the fire. And, you know, there's many kinds of fire. You know, I'm not going to go into that in, 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 in detail right now, but what Christ is telling us, he's saying, don't fear just one who can destroy your, your, your one third, you understand, of your tripartite being. You understand? One third, the body, the flesh, the material. But fear he, you understand, be in reverence, you understand, in reverence of him, you understand, who can destroy the what? The body and the what? Soul, who, has a, who can destroy the body and the soul in the uh, Gehenna, in the Gehenna, you understand, in the Gehenna. So, when we check that out, it's kind of interesting there, because we check that word um, fear. First of all, fear. I want you to write this down because um, there's different types of fear. There's different types of fear. So when we talk about the fear of Jah, this has been so woefully misunderstood. If you turn your Bibles to um, uh, page six, well, Psalms 18, right? Psalms 18. But here, this is a Schofield reference Bible. Um, quote, and this is why we keep reminding ones, we got it on the, the website, um, the study page of lojsociety.org. You can download it from there, a PDF of this, but please invest in getting a Schofield Reference Bible. You understand the, the, the King James, the old King James version of it. It's very good because as we study and we have this particular, um, this particular version of the book, it's like Wherever we're at, we're all in class together. You know what I'm saying? We, we can all be on the same page. And the references here um, are very, very um, accurate, you understand, and very clear. And they help one who is, who is willing, you understand, to learn in learning the teachings of his majesty and learning the truth and getting that knowledge that is so very important. Here at the, at the footnote at the bottom, there's a footer because it's, it's, it's referencing uh, Psalms chapter, actually chapter 19, verse 9, where it says, The fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahweh, is clean, is clean, is pure, is pure. Not talking about, see, when we say fear of, of God, we're speaking about something different than just being afraid of men or people, afraid of the, you know, like afraid of, of, of lower things. This is a higher, this is a different type of fear. 
in other words, and if you study the language, which is unlike English, English, more and more I'm convinced that, in a sense, I know why His Majesty did not speak much English, but he knew English, and many, in many instances he, he responded in, in almost perfect English, and it's, it's very clear from the witnesses that it's not because of inability, but it was a choice. Now, of course, many of us will say, yeah, that's right, I don't want, I don't want to speak English, but we are, we are where we're at. You understand? And it's not impossible for us to overcome it. We need to overcome that because we have to recognize who we are in Jah's plan. You understand? What role we serve in Jah's order, in Jah's arrangement, right? Arrangement. Um, 1 Corinthians 14.40 says, like, let all things be done decently, decently, right? And in order, and in order. You know, that's why the first thing that happens when a court is brought into session is, is that, you know, they, they'll pick up the gavel or whatnot, or somebody will have that type of scepter and say, um, the court is now order, order, order in the court. You know, saying order in these holy courts, order in the house. You know, so the Lange society is seeking to call the house of Aras the Fari to order. You understand? To order. To the order of His Majesty, but also to learn what the order is of His Majesty. Because we can't do it until we know it. And if we know it, we still might not do it un unless we have faith in it. You understand? And so we learn here where we're at. we got a couple of pages. I mean, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you've been listening to this, um, to this uh, uh, sermon, this lecture... This reasoning, you know, we started out by um, um, Book of Ephesians, then we went to Romans, and now here we're in Psalms, because this is what it means by rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand? So we can't be lazy, as it says, the fool has said in his heart. You understand? There is no God, because he doesn't have the word of God as an investment in his heart. You understand? So the Holy Spirit, you understand, the Holy Spirit cannot move on his heart because he has not treasured that word of God. So this is why studying the word is so very important. You know, there's many things that we have read and studied in the Bible, and only, we can't even say lately, or you, you know, that we really, now with the Holy Spirit guiding us, with I and I submitting ourselves, seeking to conform ourselves to Jesus Christos, to Gaitachin, that it even becomes clearer, you understand, for us what that word is. You know, you, you, you study the Bible and you have read stuff and different, not stuff, but you know, read different things in the Bible, but you're not really clear on it. But you still read it. Some things you do overstand, but other things you still, you know, the question mark is there. You're still maybe studying it. And then you, you just be walking along with something, and then it, you get that idea, and you're like, that reminds me of something that I read somewhere. And so then you'll go and, you see, if, if, if you're not lazy, in other words, and I don't mean about lazy. Lazy is foolish, spiritually, scripturally speaking. This is the fool. Senef, senef so, senef. Senef is not lazy in the sense that we, in the Western sense, senef means, in a sense, it really is point to spiritual laziness. Spiritual laziness is that you say, yeah, I got books, I like books, but I don't read the books. You know what I'm saying? Or I, I read the books, I know I should study it, but I don't study it. You know, you know, or I know I should be reading the Bible and studying the Bible, but I don't have time for it. But I love Jah. Spiritual, it's not me, see, they always get the messenger, right? It's not me saying it from, because I just don't like you. You understand? It's, it's not me saying it because of that. But Jah is saying that those who do such, and see, he puts that word there, so when we read it for ourselves and we recognize, oh, wow. Chant. That's speaking of me. That's when the, the change of mind, the repentance, you understand? And even if it seems as though, you know, um, you've been doing this so long and it seems difficult, that's when you can call on, on the resources of God. You can pray to the Father, to Abba, in the name of Yeshua, you understand? According to his word, you understand, for that wisdom, for that strength, for that overcoming. And as you know the word, like I say, to some of the brothers and sisters, and some of you all probably know this, because we've spoken on this recently, I said that, you know, John's not obligated to our tears, 
He's not obligated to, you know, because we say we're being oppressed or we're going through this or that. He's not obligated to any of those things, but he is obligated, you understand, to his word, especially when one has faith in his word and more so when one has faith in his son, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in spirit and in truth. You understand? He is obligated, and he has obligated himself to that. You understand? So some folks even, if you look at some who are atheistic or, or, or feel like there's no God or God is cruel or unjust, because they wonder, well, how come these things happen in the world? Why do God let these bad things happen? No, the question is, why do you, why do me, why do they, why do we allow those bad things to happen in the world? You understand? Because ones have more faith in the enemy. They say, well, you know, Babylon do this, Babylon do that, and Babylon's like that. And I mean, it's like, are you a preacher of Babylon or something? You know, are you are you are you a prophet of Baal or something? You have more faith. You know, and, and and some of us, here's what we can go. What Christ said: Go in your closet, go in your secret place. You don't have to go in front of people and make a spectacle of yourself. But you can go in 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 your secret place in the closet and pray and meditate these things. You know, and get your heart and your mind clear. You take the time. This is what the Shabbat and the Sabbath is so important um, for. But verse 9, it says, The fear of the Lord of Yahweh, if he who be who he be, is clean or be clean, you understand, um, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh, yod Hey wow Hey of Egeziavi, Herlotu, Sabhat, to him be the praise, are true, are true, and righteous, and righteous, all together. Now, the footer down here, it says the fear of the Lord, quote the, or it says the, quote, fear of the Lord, end quote, is a phrase. It's a phrase. You know, you've heard the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of God, right? It's a, fa it's a phrase, right? It's a phrase of OT piety, of Old Testament, of Bilui Kidan, Old Testament um, piety, or Old Testament faith. And we can say almost on the same level, Old Testament um, religiosity on that level, or at the, at, the, at the basic level, at the high level, Old Testament spirituality, right? But what is the meaning of it? Is it the same, like, fear factor? Is it the same kind of fear? No. See, this is what the English, you understand, this is what we have to study. You understand? It's, it's, it, it means reverential trust. Reverential trust. I was wrestling on this too. This whole fear thing, you know, fear, the fear of the Lord. And I read the New Testament says, but, 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 perfect love casts out all fear. But it's speaking of a different type of fear. In other words, perfect love of Jah, learning of Jah, it casts out all those fears and phobias. You see, science calls those fear phobia. You understand these phobias? You understand lead to these uh, diseases like called um, like uh, depression. You understand, and if you don't trust Jah's way and learn of Jah's way and put into manifestation in your life, in your heart, and in, in your mind, in your in your heart and your mind, you understand. But both of them working together. If you do not do that, then you're going to wind up having faith in the pharmacist, in the pharmacologist, the, the modern day drug dealer. You understand? Basically, you're going to take some of these, you know, medications and stuff because the doctor says, this will make you feel better. Take it. And you'll say, this will make me feel better? That's what you say? Okay. And, and see, in that instant, you have faith in what the doctor is saying. But then when we're reading and studying the Word, people say, I can't believe that. Well, then um, that, that's why it doesn't work for you. If, if you can't accept that as true. So I make that contrast in the teaching with well, we do demonstrate this thing called fear or belief. You know what I'm saying? We might say, okay, belief be like Eve and go to that kindergarten, you know, like, like putting the square peg in the square hole, the circular peg in the circular hole, you know, like, like kids, like little children. But it says, you know, be children in the wrath, you know, and children in the negativity, you know what I mean? But to be um, mature, we're not to be children in knowledge, you see, because knowledge is, is a responsibility, you know what I'm saying? So those who have been studying these studies and teachings and growing, there's a responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Not just in I and I sight, but in Jah sight. Because wherever you go, there Jah is. You know what I'm saying? So you can't run from, from Jah. 
You know what I'm saying? So, so, so there's this responsibility, you know what I'm saying? Responsibility to Jah's word. But in order to activate it, we have to understand these basic um, principles. So um, the fear of the Lord, the context of that means reverential trust. And I noticed this was interesting. Reverential trust, it says comma, with hatred of evil. With a hatred of evil. Now, one will say, yeah, that's right, I and I hate the evil. But wait, who, according to whose standard? Whose standard of evil? See, I, I would say, if you don't pass the split to me when I want to smoke, right, or I want to bun, you understand? I say, chat, man, not man, they're evil. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could qualify it like that. And that's the problem. You know, we've been qualifying things according to that. And then we feel, you know, this is where we get in the delusion. You know what I'm saying? Because if we do not have a love of the truth, according to Thessalonians, it says that Jah, he sends strong delusion on those because they have never received, Kabbalah received, Kebele, a love of the truth. So you really have to get into, you know, this is what prayer and meditation, meditation is so important, taking that personal time to headrest with Jah so one can get their inner house in order. Sometimes one thinks that, oh, it's those brethren or it's those ones over there that, I mean, I check for them because they're not really living up. But sometimes it's really you. It's really I and I. That's why you says, check yourself. You who think you stand, check yourself lest at least you fall. And we've seen too often those sudden, those sudden fallings or those sudden failures. Now, with that being understood, that fear of the Lord in its proper context means is, is reverential trust. You know what I'm saying? Reverential trust. You, you know, um, and it was like it would be a shame not to trust what John has said. It would be a shame not to trust the clear teaching of his majesty. You understand? Like after all that his majesty has done for I and I and all that we have said that, yes, I and I love John, not to do what John says. You understand that you, you, that's the kind of so-called fear, you, you know, that you have, fear of that falling short, that falling away after all that you know, you understand, not to do, you understand, what Josh says to do, you understand, and, and he, doesn't, he doesn't put no burden, he doesn't put a burden on I and I, you understand, it's one's doubt that puts the burden on one's reverential trust along with hatred of evil. So with that, we're going to move once again to the, to the New Testament to go back and forth. That was Psalm, the footer for Psalm 19, right, verse 9. And now we're here in Romans chapter 10 where we were saying that Paul was saying, for I bear them record, I bear them record, he bears his record of what? That they have a zeal of God, but not according, not according, not according to knowledge, right? For they being ignorant, right, of God's righteousness. That's a very key point. What is God's righteousness? They say, yeah, I, I, I now have to live righteous. And some of them, are, they may not live righteous. You know, what do, what do they mean by that? We hear the word, but what do they mean by that? Because right here, John's word says, where his majesty, he glories in it. The translation here says, for they being ignorant, ignorant means not knowing, being a nice guy or gal, right? Not knowing, they being ignorant, that means not, and we all are ignorant, so let's get over it. Some people, you know, they don't like how it feels. No, what do you mean I don't like how it feels? If you don't know something, why don't you just get to know it? You know, it's like getting caught up on, like, people tell me I make, you, you know, see, <laughs> that's, those are examples of lack of submitting oneself. You understand? Letting really oneself, one's flesh, you understand? The, the flesh, the debtors, in other words, getting in the way, right? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish what? To establish God's righteousness? No, they can't. They, they might think they are, but they're not because they're ignorant of it. It says going about to establish their own righteousness, their own righteousness. Well, you see, every man of mine, you know what I'm saying, that, that do it like this. Every, every man that do this this, this way, it, them, them are righteous. But if them do it the next way, if them not righteous, if them go along with 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 with, with this group of rastas, rastas, them righteous. If they go along with that group of rastas, them not righteous. You know that's the kind of games that ones have been playing and are playing for too long in I and I Father's house. And this kind of brings us, you know, brings us to the um, 
the, the point of Romans chapter 10, the apparent failure. It's apparent that a, a phase of Rastafari has not reached the summit destined for I and I by the great creator. You understand? But here's the good news in the sense, is that that generation, you see, that gen it's like the 40-year generation has, has, has everyone who was 20 years and up, in other words, you understand? John allowed them to wander in the wilderness and, and their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Then in the time of Joshua, of Yeshua, of Joshua, you understand, there was to be a new generation that John would take the children now, you understand, into the promised land. I and I do admit in the true and faithful Amen and Amen that we are on the cusp, that we have the potentiality to be that new generation that can enter in. And the lesson is that the old generation, predominantly, a few did, we, we know, enter into the promised land, went forward as it, as it were. But many, too many, you understand, have not entered into the land because of into Jah's rest. He calls it his, his Shabbat. They, 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 were not, they were not able to enter in. He, he just swore that they would not enter in, you understand, to his rest. You understand? So some elders will tell you it's Babylon, it's Babylon that do it. Nah, Josh says something different. Because if, if they say it's Babylon that has done it and don't take ownership, you see, we've got to take ownership that, yes, it is those former ones and ones of I and I. You understand? But what's the lesson here that we need to learn? You know what I'm saying? And in a sense, to get over it. Because if we don't get over it, we cannot overcome, but we remain like they were, overcome. You know what I'm saying? But I and I is to be the overcomer. So right here, um, in, in the Schofield, next to righteousness in verse 3, there's a footer which says the word righteous, acidic, you know, acidic, or some might say acidic in that, but really acidic, right? Um, the word righteousness here and in the passages have marginal references to this, and they say it means legal, right, legal and self-righteousness. So they have gone through, and, and this is kind of, you know, I, I said I wasn't going to get into this right here and this one, but I, I have to announce it, and I just can't keep it. This is um, the book on Malaku. Right on, on, on Brother Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. We just uh we just um have gotten you know, have gotten um sight sample of a new book that um we've been speaking about on Doctor Malaku Emmanuel Bayan right here, Yovas and uh, of the Ethiopian World Federation of that particular generation of um Afro Americans. You understand? Um, we're on the cusp of a new Afro-American revolution because people have been playing around in I-9 divine heritage for too long and been trying to, you know, um, how can you say, uh, run like wire fences, so-called legal wire fences, to, to keep I-9, you understand, from the rightful reins of government and of the collective self-government, you know, and autonomy that is ours, you understand, because of his majesty and the truth of his majesty. So I just thought it was kind of important just to touch on that kind of just briefly, and hopefully we get into some more detail on that, because, you know, it says that, that this idea where they're ignorant of God's righteousness, of his legal qualifications. See, God's righteousness is all about our divine heritage. Man and people, and of the man and man and man, you know what I'm saying, going back and forth to court over the Federation, and this one is, is, is running, and these people are not. Oh, this is garbage. But, 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 it, but we can understand it now in Jah's word. It says it means legal or self-righteousness. It's not according to Jah's standard, but it's according to their own standard. Or, if, you know, even tribalism is getting in there. And we're in the age or the era of judges. Right now is a manifestation of judges. You know, if you know the fulfillment of Judges, it fulfills in this, in this conflict between Judah, you understand, and Binyam. You understand, Judah and Benjamin. And in the overstanding of that, on the national level, 
that's the so-called African-American, so-called Negroes, who were responsible, you understand, for this particular organization, this legacy that we have here, and many of I and I brothers, you understand, um, from Yad or, or the Jamrock or Jamaican, you know, so the so-called Jamaican Rastafari and Afro-American Rastafari all over this particular thing called our divine heritage of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Some say it's about Garvey. They put Garvey first and foremost. I and I put Dr. Malako Emanuel Bayan first and foremost. Why? Because this is according to the order of His Majesty. He is the one whom His Majesty sent forward. You know, then he is the messenger of His Majesty for I and I, Rastafari, and in particular for the once lost but now found Beta Israel, speaking of i.e. black people, Ethiopian Hebrews. It's, it is about what, what is the message of the real messenger? Because this other message that people have been talking about, uh, how far has it gotten you? You see, that keeps you babbling on about Babylon instead of preaching, yoking, and teaching and manifesting the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, which is the overcoming. You understand for I and I. You understand? Just say so. Just say so. You understand? It's not Ras Iadinos or Ras Iadonis. You understand? Teferi that say so. Only. Firstly and foremostly, it is Jah and Jah word. His majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So some, um, some can try to, 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 you know, try, to, try to fake the funk or try to, like, you know, they, they can do, you know, do what they will. They, they, they can do what they, what they will to do. But I and I, you know what I'm saying, will make I and I wills, and I'm making I and I wills obedient to the good influence of the good news.